I've noticed a few key differences when I'm the speaker and when the governor's the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, the governor gets 30 minutes, I get 10. <laughs> Number two, there's a row of cameras in the back when the governor's the speaker. I get one, and that's only because my buddy V is working the camera. <laughs> And number three, I think the governor probably had some fancy fish dish. I get a hot dog. <laughs> it's important to know where you stand. That's right. <laughs> Today's title is the Rotary Roast. Um, looking around at the head table. I mean, Carol and Susan, I love y'all too much. I would never poke fun of y'all. Omarosa, you're brand new. I could never tell any jokes about you. And Maui, I just like you too much. I would never poke fun at you. Short? <laughs> Augustine, let me tell you this. It's been a pleasure to serve under you. It's been, you can take them off. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm telling you, he was a great president. The first thing he did was he invited me to lunch, and he was going to talk about, you know, well, how he wants to continue me doing the joke of the day, which I really appreciate it when I'm, you know, when I'm available. And we went to lunch at some, I forgot what restaurant, but we had this really cute waitress that was waiting on us. And she came up, and uh, we had our menus, and, and Shard said, uh, I'll have a quickie. <laughs> that waitress took his glass of water and dumped it on his lap and walked away. And Shard was like, what in the world? I grabbed Shard's menu. I said, you know what? I think it's pronounced quiche. <laughs> I notice your wife is here. That's great. <laughs> hey, you know what, him, uh, she Mindy, and, and interprets the menu. yes, yes. <laughs> uh, this is not your turn to talk. You have to. Be <laughs> it's important for you to shut up. <laughs> Short and M Mindy were, were sitting there on their back patio and drinking a glass of wine just a few weeks ago, and Short was holding his glass and they talking, and Short said, "You know." I love you so much, I don't think I can ever live without you. And his wife, Mindy, said, is that you talking or is that the wine talking? <laughs> Shard said, no, that's me talking to the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this, but Shard's family is from Sherrington, Louisiana. If y'all don't know where that is, that is right down the road from where I'm from in Lauraville. Yeah. We're not right down the road, just across the parish line. I'll bet you our ancestors used to hang out together. I have no doubt. In fact, that explains why he's got a stupid name like Shard. <laughs> it runs in his family. No, everybody's got nicknames down there. In fact, y'all know Shard's great uncle was named Poo Poo Richard. <laughs> That's true. That was his real given name at birth. Poo Poo Richard. <laughs> well, after living a lifetime with a name like that, Poo Poo decided that he was going to change his name. He went to St. Mary Parish at the courthouse, and he went to see the clerk of court, and he said, uh, I want to change my name. The clerk said, whoa, 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 you don't just come in here and change your name. That's a whole lot of time. That's a whole lot of paperwork. He said, are you sure you want to change your name? Poo Poo said, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so he said, all right, what is your name right now? Poo Poo said, my name is Poo Poo Richard. The clerk said, don't say no more, I understand. <laughs> he said, all right, what do you want to change your name to? Poo Poo said, I believe I'm going to change my name to Poo Poo Boudreaux. <laughs> Short actually got stopped for speeding when he was on his way to Sherrington. He's gone down Highway 90 after Lafayette. You pass New Iberia, you're on Highway 90 and he's going down there. He got stopped by the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Department for speeding. The deputy stopped him and pulled him over. And he, man, he was mad. He jumped out of there and he starts yelling at Short. He says, sir, let me see your driver's license right now. Short said, oh, I'm sorry, sir, but my license is expired. I don't have one. He said, what? He said, well, let me see the registration to your car. Well, Short said, this is a stolen car. I don't even have that. <laughs> The deputy said, stolen car? He said, yeah, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, don't dig in my glove compartment. That's where I keep a gun. The deputy said, a gun? He said, yeah, well, I shot my wife, and I have her in the trunk. <laughs> the deputy ran back to his, his car. He calls the sheriff. He said, 
Sheriff, get over here quick. I just stopped a man. He got no license, no registration. He's got a gun and he shot his wife and she's in the car. Man, the sheriff was there in three minutes. Comes screeching up to the scene. He runs up to Shard. He says, sir, might I understand that you don't have a driver's license? Oh, Shard said, yeah, I have one. Look, it's right here. He said, uh, what about the registration to your car? Do you have that? Oh, Shard said, yeah, look, it's right here in the glove compartment. He said, hold up, don't reach in there. He said, do you have any guns on you? Oh, Shard said, no, I don't own any guns. He said, well, uh, I suppose your wife is not dead and in the trunk, too. Oh, Shard said, no, she's at home waiting for me. He said, I'm sorry, sir, but my deputy just called me up, and he said, he stopped you, and you had no license, no registration. You had a gun, and you had killed your wife. Shard said, that lying son of a gun. I bet he told you I was speeding, too. <laughs> You know, one time I brought Shard to Lauraville, where my hometown is. He was in Sherrington, and he came to visit me in Lauraville. I said, come, I'm going to buy you a beer. So we went into the only bar that's in Lauraville, the Tiger Inn. We got up in the bar, and we started, and the whole place was empty. It was in the middle of the day, except there was these two fellas sitting at the end of the bar, and me and Shard are having our beer, and Shard started listening to the conversation, and the two fellas were like, one of them turned to the other. He said, hey, where are you from? The fella said, me, I was born and raised in Lauraville, Louisiana. The other fella said, me too. Me too, I was raised and born and raised in Lauraville. He said, let's have a beer on that. Man, they got him a beer and they drank it. And the other fella turned back. He said, hey, what high school did you go to in Lauraville? Boy, he said, I went to the Lauraville High School class in 1969. The fella said, me too. Me too, I went to Lauraville High School class in 69. Let's have a beer on that. And they had him a beer. The other fella turned back to the other and said, hey, which street did you grow up on in Lowerville? Oh, he said, I grew up right there on Main Street. He was like, me too. Me too, I grew up on Main Street. <laughs> Let's have a beer on that. They drank him enough. Finally, Shard looked at me and said, Kent, what in the world is going on? I said, oh, that's just the Boudreaux twins. They drunk again. <laughs> <laughs> There is one bit of misfortune that Shard had. Every other president gets to travel to the big Rotary Convention. You know, some go to Australia, it might be in Korea. Shard got to go to Houston. <laughs> Very exciting, he got in his car and he drove to Houston for the big convention. And Shard was telling me all about it. He said it was a lot of fun. He got to Houston though, and he didn't know where the place was. And he's looking for the convention center and he didn't, his phone died, he had forgotten his charger, he couldn't navigate, he's like driving around Houston, all met, he didn't know where he was, finally he stops at some convenience store, and there was this old fella sitting outside, and he's like, rolled down his window, Shard said, excuse me sir, but can, can you tell me the fastest way to get to the convention center in Houston? The fella said, you walking or you driving? Shard said, I'm driving. Oh, he said, that's the fastest way. <laughs> Then Char said that they had some big event and they loaded all the Rotarians onto these buses. And Char's waiting to get on the bus and he's waiting in line. And you know that step on that bus is pretty high. Well, they had this woman who was, I mean, like this tall with a tight mini skirt on. I mean, that skirt was so tight, she couldn't even split her legs to get on the bus. And Char's standing behind waiting to get on the bus. But this woman's trying, she reaches back and she unzips her skirt a little bit. And now she still couldn't get on the bus. She's trying to get her. Oh, she reaches back again and unzips her, cert, her skirt again. She still could. Now she's trying sideways to get on the bus. She reaches back a third time and unzips her skirt some more. And finally, Shard got fed up. He picked that woman up under her arms, carried her on the bus, and set her down. That woman turned around. She, she slapped Shard upside the head. Shard was like, what was that for? She said, that's for being fresh with me. He said, me fresh with you? You just unzipped my pants three times. <laughs> Well, the best part is they got to the convention. So it was Maui and Shard. They had Haggai there and Jim McElwain. They all got, now Sherry was so tight that she told them that they couldn't have their own hotel room. They were gonna have to bunk together in the hotel. 
<laughs> so they were all taking turns sleeping in the room with each other. Well, nobody wanted to sleep with Shard because he snores. <laughs> well, the first night it was Maui's turn to sleep with Shard in the same hotel room. Maui got up to breakfast the next morning. He goes out. His eyes were all bloodshot. His clothes were rumpled. I mean, look, he was a mess. And everybody else was like, what in the world happened to you? Maui's like, man, I spent the night in the room with Shard. That sucker snored all night. All night long, I spent the whole night watching him. Well, the next night they swapped. It was Haggai's turn, and he spent the night in the room with Shard. And same thing, he got up to breakfast the next morning. He was still in his pajamas, his hair all messed up. And he walked down to breakfast like the same thing. Man, Shard snored all night long. He snored. All, I spent the whole night watching him. Well, the next night it was Jim McElwain's turn. He spent the night in the room with Shaw, and he got up to breakfast. Man, he was looking all fresh and rested, dressed up, ready to go. He's like, hey, fellas. You were like, wait a minute. Didn't you spend the night in the room last night with Shard? Jim said, I sure did. He said, last night we were getting ready to go to bed. I went up to Shard. I tucked him in. I kissed him on the cheek. He spent the whole night watching me. <laughs> Right on time, my time is up. <laughs> Let me say that it's been a pleasure to serve under you. Thank you so much for allowing me to do what I love to do, and uh, go Tigers. <laughs> <laughs>